Hey everyone, it's Jess. I'm sitting in my bedroom floor again today, which means that today was too cold to film outside and also it was a little bit rainy, if you don't mind. Tomorrow, hopefully the weather is going to be a little bit better and I can film out there. But guys, today I've got one of my peperomias and actually I realize I haven't talked a lot about any of my peperomias on this channel. I've got a plant video here for you guys today and it's going to be on how to care for your peperomia polyboptra, which is this plant I have right here. So this is my polyboptria. He's actually quite a tall plant. One of the easiest plants I have in my collection to grow. And um, yeah, guys, he's a super tolerant plant and a very beautiful plant to have in your collection. Now, you can definitely see that some of the leaves on my polybotria aren't as aesthetically pleasing. Like if you look at this one, he's got some caterpillar bites. But it just is an example of why this guy is actually not a lot of trouble. I keep him outside. He's exposed to the elements and he's exposed to the pests. But he still is able to grow so well. And um, he doesn't give me a lot of trouble. So the Polybotria is a member of the Peperomia family. And this guy is actually native to the rainforests of Colombia and Peru. He is an epiphyte, which means that he grows on things such as wood or on top of stones. He doesn't really grow from the soil. The Polybotria commercially also has a lot of names such as the raindrop plant, the money plant, the coin leaf peperomia. And that's really because its leaves are very, um, it's very round and they all shape um, in, to a point which makes it look like a raindrop. I've also heard the commercial term Chinese money plant however sometimes I feel like that name gets mixed up with the layer peperomoroides. And the name Peperomia polyvotra derives from Greek words so Peperomia actually means resembling pepper. Polybotria means many. And that is, I think that's a good description for this plant because if you do keep him well, he will give off a lot of leaves. And actually a lot more specimens I find and that I've come across are a lot more bushier than the one I have here. My plant is actually a little bit on the leggier side. In terms of characteristics for this plant, this plant, as I said, is a tends to be a little bit more bushier, so it does give off a lot more leaves. Its leaves are actually quite fleshy, and so is its stems. And you might have seen the term succulent being used to describe its leaves or its stems. And what that is really saying is that the characteristic of this leaf, the fleshiness of this leaf, means that this plant can hold a lot more water. So keep this in mind when we talk about watering, because given that this plant and can retain water and moisture a little bit better. It is a sign that when you do your watering, you just want to be careful not to overwater this plant. In terms of flowering, this plant does give off flowers and these flowers uh, I think are a light green color. My plant has never flowered so I'll probably just insert a photo of the different flowers. When this plant matures its stem takes a more woody appearance and the first tip is around lighting. So as a peperomia this guy likes bright indirect light. If you are growing this plant outdoors I would err on giving this plant a little bit more shade. If you do keep this plant in in direct light there's a risk that it might burn its leaves so I have my guy sitting outside under the veranda it gets full morning light for about four hours and then is in the shade for the rest of the day and I think he does um, he's he's doing all right when I kept this guy indoors I had him in my living room and it was a um, it was a south facing window which meant that this plant got light um, all day around and it was filtered light and I did notice that he grew a lot quicker when he was given those conditions. As I said before this is a hardier plant if you're keeping this guy as a house plant just remember to give this guy some light and he should be quite happy with that.
In terms of temperature for this plant, this plant thrives in temperatures between 16 to 26 degrees, again reflecting its natural habitat of being a epiphyte in a rainforest. The lowest temperatures I'd say this plant can tolerate is 10 degrees and in fact because I've kept my plant outdoors during last winter it didn't get to lows of below 10 degrees probably around eight or six degrees i live in sydney so it doesn't get too cold but i would just recommend particularly if you have a more juvenile plant to bring him indoors and not to let him be exposed to temperatures below 10 degrees because that will encourage frost damage for your plant in terms of watering so this is where the characteristics around its succulent leaves and stem come into play because its leaves can retain a lot more moisture that means you just got to be careful not to overwater this plant and a tip there is only water this plant when you see that the soil has dried out to check that you might want to use a moisture meter or stick your finger into the medium it's getting into autumn and winter where it's a lot colder and the water takes a lot longer to evaporate i only water my uh, polybotria once every week but in summer i water it probably once every three to five days because the water evaporated a lot quickly one thing to keep in mind here is the soil preference for this plant this plant prefers peat moss and peat moss is a more uh, moisture retaining soil and because of that it might take a bit longer for the water to evaporate from it so whilst i've given a range of watering i would just encourage you to always look at the soil make sure it has dried out before you actually water them again tip I have for watering is don't worry too much if you don't keep a tight watering schedule for this plant because again it retains moisture um, by itself. A sign for when this plant needs water is that its leaves start to curl up and I think I've got an example here of its little leaf. So when you see the leaves start to curl up that is a sign that you need to water this plant. Also from a watering perspective i've let this guy dry out multiple times again don't do that to your plant the reason why i think this is a quite a tolerant plant is if you do forget to water him uh, he is quite forgiving and he does bounce back quite quickly the only thing with underwatering then is if you underwater too much leaves on the lower parts of your plant might die off and that will encourage your plant to adopt a more uh, leggy characteristic as opposed to having a more bushier form so i just touched on soil briefly um, this plant likes a soil mixture of peat moss and perlite i use a mixture of 50 percent peat moss and 50 percent perlite the perlite is sort of to counteract the moisture retaining characteristics of the peat moss because peat moss i find really holds on to water it's really like a sponge one thing i learned when i was researching for soil for this plant peat moss is a medium that has a higher acidity and the polybotria actually prefers to be in a little bit more acidic medium from a repotting perspective this is a plant where you don't need to worry about repotting every growing season in fact the polybotria has quite a delicate root system so i don't actually recommend you repot this plant until it becomes a lot more root bound and to see when your plant is root bound you actually can see because when you pull the plant out from its pot it's got all these roots wrapped around the soil in terms of maintenance for this guy i've given this guy a stake because he has grown quite tall so you want to make sure you support your plant and in this case because he's getting quite leggy probably a factor of my underwatering even then hit this stake to support him the thing i do to maintain my plant is because his plant has this nice waxy sheen i do wipe his leaves to remove any dust or dirt and that is really just to help the leaf breathe because given that it already has a waxy coating on it that may make it a little bit more difficult for your plant to breathe through its leaves so you want another added layer of dust and dirt to be clogging the leaves pores so i do give my plant a good wipe across its leaves just to remove any excess dirt and dust on its leaves
I don't really prune my plant because I find that it can get leggy quite by itself. If you are wanting to keep that bushy appearance, my tip there is to ensure it gets enough light and it gets enough water because that's when you really see a lot of growth happening. In terms of growth, I was doing my research, I actually came across a lot of um, pieces that said that the polybotra is actually a slow grower. Uh, that's definitely not my experience because I think my plant is actually quite a fast grower. The other thing to, to note is on the internet it does say that this plant only gets above a foot tall or 30 centimeters tall but my plant I think is about 50 centimeters tall now so if you are keen to grow this into a lovely big plant don't be discouraged by what you see on the internet because this plant does get quite tall. Its growing periods are during spring and summer and this is during the time where I will encourage you to fertilize your plant. I give it a diluted mix of synthetic fertilizer so that's fertilizer I would have bought over the counter at a local nursery. Sorry. In terms of propagation for this plant, I've yet to propagate mine because I can't bear cutting off its leaves, but you can propagate this plant using stem or leaf cuttings. Leaf cuttings, what you do is you want to take a leaf, you want to cut it in half, and then you want to stick halves into the soil. Keep it in some light uh, conditions, so bright indirect light, and make sure that the soil is moist. In terms of stem cuttings, what you want to do is you want to take a stem and then uh, with a leaf and then pop it in some water. You might also want to dip the stem cutting in some rooting hormone because that will encourage the roots to grow a lot quicker. I would encourage you to only do this during the warmer months because this gives you a higher chance for your propagated babies to survive. In terms of pests for this plant, another reason why this is a quite an easy house plant to take care of is that it can be quite um, pest free although having said that its main enemies are mealybugs and spider mites in terms of mealybugs and spider mites you just want to make sure you identify them early as possible so that means I recommend every week you just do a quick inspection of your plant make sure there's no pests you can see because if you do then you can action it quite quickly in terms of treating for mealybugs and spider mites I recommend using a soapy spray so that's water and hand soap if you have that and then spray it on your plant alternatively you could use neem oil to either directly target the um, mealybugs or you can turn that into a spray as well but the tip around creating a neem spray is that you also need to put some soap in the spray because that helps break down the neem oil yes from my experience i keep my plant outdoors and i actually touch wood but have not come across any pests with my plant so far so guys if you're keeping yours indoors as a house plant be rest assured that it should be quite pest free the polybotra is also a perennial plant which means that it doesn't die back over the cooler months so that means all year round you can be getting this lovely foliage in terms of humidity for this plant i've seen that this plant likes a bit of humidity however i don't give any humidity for my plant I'm sure if you did it would encourage some growth a little bit more but um, what i've heard is that it prefers moderate humidity so that's humidity of about 60 percent if you give that that's great but if you don't have a means to give it humidity i wouldn't be too worried about it there's some tips around increasing humidity such as spraying around the plant but guys in terms of spraying your plants to increase humidity you might only increase the humidity for about five minutes around your plant so i personally don't recommend spraying plants to, as a way to increase humidity because it's actually not that effective what you might want to do is to cluster your plants so i have this guy sitting with my other plants outdoors he's got his friends around him so that might be a way to keep to keep the humidity up but i'd be too worried if you can't give your plant humidity so guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you got some care tips for your polybotria i tried to be as comprehensive as i could i'm just thinking if i've missed anything out i don't think i have i think in summary this is a very easy plant to take care of 
I think it's easier than the Peperomia watermelon plant. I actually think that is a lot harder than this plant. This is a very rewarding plant because if you give it the right conditions, so if you have it set up in a space where it gets filtered light, you're watering it here and there, it's going to reward you with some amazing growth and foliage, which is why I would recommend this plant as a house plant. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully tomorrow we're filming back in our normal location, but really appreciate you um, stopping by and watching this video. If you do have any questions regarding care tips for the polybotria, let me know, either dropping a comment below or just reach out through my Instagram at jessiepotplants. Otherwise guys, thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.